Welcome to another JournalNow.com high school football video. I'm Joe Serrera, and I'm joined today by Cleveland Rams head football coach, Scott Riley. Coach, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Your team is coming off of a win in the regional final over Clayton, your Johnston County neighbor in the East regional final. How emotional was, was that game? Uh, uh, it, it was very emotional. Um, obviously, we, we try to downplay the, the rivalry aspect of it since we'd already played them once this year and mm -hmm. uh, just play up the, the importance of the game, trying to earn our first birth to a state championship game. Um, but, you know, there's no ignoring that the, the kids grew up playing football with each other and, and know each other really well. So, um, you know, they wanted to go to a state championship game, but they also, uh, you know, didn't want to let Clayton go in their place. So um, I think it was a, a big relief when, uh, you know, we pulled ahead and, and then uh, won the game. You mentioned pulling ahead. You guys had a little bit of an early deficit in that game. What did you learn about your team in that game? Um, I, I don't know if we, we learned it in that game. I, I think we've known it about them all year. They're, they're just made up a little bit different than, um, than uh, any group I've been around before, just that they, um, re, you know, refuse to, to let things out of their own control. So um, it's something they, they kind of talked about. I think the, maybe the pandemic played that up where mm -hmm. so much for so long was as, outside of their control. Once they got to be able to get on the field and, and take control over who won or who lost, um, they weren't going to let that go. So um, I kind of learned that about them week one against Southview. Um, we led the whole game, but um, you, we had a, a you know two-score game. They came back and made it a uh, pretty tight four-point four lead we had. And, um, uh, you know, momentum was had definitely shifted, and, and they kind of stormed back and um, put it back into a two-score game uh, category uh, for us. So, um, I think right then and then uh, the, the first Clayton game where was the first time we trailed all year um, mm -hmm. after having a big lead at halftime and uh, Amaron getting hurt and, you know, all the momentum shifted uh, to their side and um, everything seemed to be going wrong and they just uh, stood up in the fourth quarter and uh, played unbelievable and won the fourth quarter 14 nothing and, and got the victory. So um, they kind of known it about them um, mm -hmm. and they, they continue to demonstrate that. Um, uh, last Friday. You mentioned this is uh, Cleveland's first trip to the state championship game. Uh, with all the COVID restrictions, can't have some of the, the, the hoopla, the, maybe the pep rallies, some of the other stuff that you, that would normally surround a state championship football game. Do you wish your guys could have that or is it a little easier to keep them focused with, without some of the distractions they might have in a typical year? Yeah, I think from a coach's perspective, you obviously want to keep it as normal a week as possible, uh, particularly mm -hmm. the short week. You know, you don't have as many reps and that kind of thing. Um, but at the same time, it's, uh, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So you want the kids to have the excitement and enjoy the, the fun of it. So, um, you know, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword like that. For folks from the triad who haven't seen your team, don't know much about them, what would you tell them? Who are, who are some of the guys that – uh, folks need to be watching Thursday night for the Rams. Uh, offensively, we're, we're a spread team. So, um, you know, our our, uh, our quarterback is, is key in those spread attacks and distributing the ball. And he does a real good job of that. Skylar Locklear getting the ball to a, a lot of different receivers and, um, you know, and, and running backs and, and that kind of thing. So he's kind of the, the point guard out there, and, um, you know, distributing the football. He does a real good job with that. So, um I think you'll, we're, we're pretty balanced, you know, 50-50 run and pass. Um, and then uh, defensively, we're a 3-4 um, and uh, try to be aggressive. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Amari and Amari and Hampton, uh, considered one of the nation's top running backs in the class of 2022. Uh, you're still an explosive offense without him. I mean, obviously, you'd love to have him. He had an ankle injury. You mentioned that Clayton game. What makes this offense so explosive? I mean, it, it's not just 48 points a game. It's, as you said, balance between run and pass. And you don't see that very much. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, with uh, um, our, our philosophy is try to be able to get the ball anywhere um, on the field and, uh, you know, take the, the open throws of the space um, that's available on the field. And um, fortunately for us, we have, um, you know, a, a good amount of talent so we can, you know, give the ball to four different receivers at any given time that are um, have the ability to, to work open and that kind of thing. And our line does a good job um, as well. So I think, um, you know, there's no glaring holes 
I, don't, I, I probably at this point, you know, um, and I think Mount Tabor is the same way that there's no bad players on the field at this point. Mm-hmm. So um, that, that helps. Yeah. I mean, it, now Tabor's coach, Tyshawn Brown raved about your quarterback, Skylar Locklear. He said, he said, he's the best running quarterback we're going to face all year. And he's the best passing quarterback we're going to face all year. Uh, so he's obviously concerned about uh, contain. Nobody's going to stop your offense, but containing him a little bit. Mount Tabor has one of the best defenses around. I don't know how they compare with some of the teams you've seen this season, but uh, what do you see from the Spartans on both sides of the ball? Yeah, like you said, they're, they're really good on defense. I don't uh, I don't know if they've given up more than 20 some points all season. So they uh, that that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, just like I, I said about the offense, there, there's no one you can say, all right, we can pick on him. They, all, all the guys out there, um, offense and defensively, are, are good football players and uh, are obviously well coached and, and tough. And, and you can tell they play play really hard. Um, so they will they'll definitely be a a good test, you know, two 10 and 0 teams uh, playing. One is remarkable. We've got all our games in, uh, both teams, mm-hmm. and we're victorious every time. So um, it'll be, uh, you know, two teams that have, you know, really earned their way there. And um, it's a shame one of us has to lose. What does your team have to do Thursday night to not be the one that loses this game? What, what are the keys for you guys? Um, I think, you know, not a, a not to oversimplify it, but, you know, blocking and tackling is what it comes down to. Um, if we can block them up front, which not even, I don't think anybody has, but mm-hmm. if we can get first to do that, that'll that'll go a long way. And, um, you know, um, they're, uh, you know, I assume they're twin brothers. Um, they got they're not. Uh, the, the Tyrese, the quarterback's a junior. BJ, the, uh, the running back's yeah. a junior. Yep. Yeah. The two brothers are, are tough to tackle, so I feel like if we can – and their whole team is all their skilled players are. So I feel like if we can tackle in space, um, that will uh, do well. So blocking and tackling is, you know, it's back to the basics of football. And I think whoever does that better will, will win. Coach, we thank you for taking the time out to talk to us in a busy week. And uh, we look forward to the matchup Thursday night, 7 p.m. Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. Thank you. Thank you.